Hello, uh, welcome to Force 4 at 4. Um, in these videos we're going to answer some of the more general questions we've had on the online forum this week. Um, first section is going to be uh, relating to true design composite fittings. Um, and the first question is, uh, why should uh, you change your bronze or DZR hull fittings for composite ones? Um, Modern boats uh, have a lot more electronic and electrical kit on them um, and also many more marinas obviously have power, um, even private marinas, so uh, there's a lot more electrolysis and therefore galvanic action in the water. Um, we have hull anodes uh, to sort of help protect our boats from this, um, however obviously the, more, the less metal that you have on, attached sort of to your boat in the water, um, the, the less susceptible you are uh, to this problem. The next question on the true design uh, composite fittings is are they as strong as metal fittings? Um, bronze will always be a stronger product, um, however the true design products are plenty strong enough um, and certainly in areas where they're not exposed, say behind a toilet or um, you know, in, a, in a cupboard or whatever, uh, you're not going to have uh, any, any issues. Um, if you've got exposed um, fittings, say in an engine room or something like that, uh, there is a, a load bearing collar available which you can um, sort of attach to the skin fitting and that will be able to take over 200 kilos of static force or a fairly hefty whack um, uh, or a large engineer um, and, uh, uh, and so you've got no issues on that front. The next question we have is on cost. Uh, so uh, would a composite true design fitting be more expensive uh, than a metal fitting? In metal you've got uh, bronze and DZR, um, bronze being the more expensive of the two. Uh, true design uh, composite fittings are always going to be less expensive than bronze, but um, it's a bit of a mixed bag with the DZR. In the larger fittings, um, certainly the true design fittings are less expensive. Um, in the smaller ones they are sort of comparable or slightly more expensive. But uh, when you look at the lifetime of the product, um, a DZR fitting is designed to last for five years, uh, whereas the true design fittings are quoted as lasting the lifetime of your vessel. Um, the final question we, uh, we had this week on uh, true design composite fittings was, are you able to mix uh, composite with metal fittings? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, so as an example, if you uh, had a bronze uh, skin fitting and you wish to change the ball valve on it, uh, you could leave the bronze skin fitting in place. Um, and just remove the old ball valve uh, and with um, some PTFE tape or Sikaflex, uh, replace it with a true design ball valve, um, no problem. Hello, following a question we had from one of our customers on the Force 4 at 4 Facebook sessions, I'd like to talk to you regarding some AIS transponders that will work with laptops and tablets via Wi-Fi. First device I'd like to talk about is a new device. It's recently on the market by Digital Yacht, and it's called the AIS-TX, which is a Class B transponder, and it has a Wi-Fi interface for connecting to phones, tablets, and PCs, Macs, anything with a Wi-Fi capability. Uh, it's supplied with an external GPS, and it has a easy to fit FME connector, which is a small diameter connector, which is easy to route through the, through the vessel. And it will run from 12 or 24 volts. It is compatible with the Navionics application and will overlay onto the chart in this. The next device I'd like to talk to you about is from a company called Vespa and it's their model called the XB8000. This is an AIS Class B transponder, and it has built-in Wi-Fi for streaming data to phones, tablets, and PCs. It has NMEA183 and NMEA2000 for connecting up to chart plotters, and it has a USB for connecting up to a laptop or a PC. This device has a NMEA2000 gateway, which will take data from the NMEA 2000 bus can be navigational data and that will route it over Wi-Fi, USB or NMEA 183. So you can use the Vespa app and see all the data from your boat's NMEA 2000 bus on your phone. 
Um, it will also work with the Navionics app, so it will stream the AIS data and overlay it on top of the Nav Navionics charts. And it also has built-in alarms for man overboard and anchor drift. It is supplied with an external antenna and also has a small diameter connector, so routing and cutting holes in your deck aren't uh, too bad. And it's also supplied with an external alarm and a silent switch. The third and last device we're going to discuss today is another product from Digital Yacht, and it's their model called the Nomad. This is rather unique in the fact that it's a portable AIS Class B transponder and can be powered via USB. Now, this product can plug into your laptop or plug into a waterproof USB socket on your vessel and has an internal GPS, so there's no external GPS to use with this device. It has a connection on the front for a VHF or AS antenna and it's also supplied with this sucker mount antenna which will connect and stick on to a, a clean surface and this device will stream data via Wi-Fi to your laptop or to your uh, to your tablet or phone and is compatible with the Navionics app. So it will overlay the AIS data onto a Navionics app. It's really great for uh, those who don't want a permanent installation, those who uh, delivery skippers, charter skippers, uh, pilots and tenders, uh, or a backup for a main system. I'd like to finish off with a quick um, introduction to a product that will hold an iPad on a, on a vessel, and it's from a company called Rock, which is part of Scanstrap, and it's their iPad holder. And it comes in uh, in the form of a kit. You can buy the components separately, but this is a kit form, which makes it nice and easy to purchase. It consists of a base. In this, this particular one is a uh, surface mount adhesive base. Uh, you can buy it in screw down or rail mount form. An adjustable body, so you can adjust the angle of the uh, iPad and the iPad holder. And it's very, very simple to put the iPad in. You just lay it on the bottom feet and wrap it down. And it gives a very, very firm grip on the iPad so it's not going to jump out when you're hitting some uh, waves on the boat. And that is a great solution for holding your iPad on a vessel. Uh, a question that we've been asked on uh, Force 4, 4 um, relatively recently is, are fleeces uh, breathable? Uh, well, the simple answer to that is, yes, they are. Uh, this is a, a Force 4 uh, windward fleece, and of course it's breathable. You can blow straight through it. Um, even with the more wind-resistant fleeces that you can wear underneath your waterproofs, again, you can blow through them. So, yes, of course, all fleeces are breathable.